Joining me right now, psychologist and author of the books, Too Much and Never Enough and The Reckoning, Mary Trump. Mary is Donald Trump's niece and host of the Mary Trump Show podcast. Mary, big welcome to you. Uh, speaking of big, it was a heck of a week of testimony with Stormy Daniels and her alleged encounter with Donald Trump. Was Daniels credible to you? I'm curious the parts of her testimony you think Donald Trump cared about most. And I've got to ask this question. Do you think he felt embarrassment or shame for the adulterous and explicit story that Stormy shared? Well, first of all, Alex, it's great to be with you uh, today. And I think it's it's important to be clear about this. And it's part of the reason we're here. Donald Trump is incapable of shame or embarrassment. Um, he is capable of humiliation, but the kind of details that were revealed in the courtroom aren't really the kind of details that bother him. Uh, he has no problem being seen as somebody who's kind of sleazy and doesn't treat women well. And in fact, unfortunately, he takes it as a badge of honor. Um, having said that, I thought that uh, Stormy Daniels was incredibly uh, sincere, and I thought she came across very well. There was no reason to think that she was making up any of what she says. At one point, she said to the defense attorneys, if she were making it up, she would have made it a better story. Uh, so, yeah, I thought she was incredibly credible, and uh, I didn't see any reason for the jury to, to doubt her. Uh, and I think the point remains that if, if Donald Trump believes that she's lying, there's one very simple way for him to set the record straight, and that is not to break his gag order outside of the courtroom. It's to testify in his own defense in his criminal trial inside of the courtroom. Yeah. What, what do you make of your uncle saying he'd be proud to go to jail over the violations potentially for Judge Marchand's gag order? I mean, first of all, do you believe him? Would he be scared or would he be comfortable playing the martyr from a jail cell? I think that it's absurd for anybody to think that he would willingly go into to jail uh, for even for a night, even for an afternoon, honestly. Uh, and hopefully, if he ever is sent to jail for breaking the gag order, which he's now done 11 times, um, he it's for real. It's not that he's going to some suite at some fancy hotel that's just guarded. Uh, he is there in a cell without his phone, just like any other American would be. Uh, he would come out a changed man. Honestly, I just don't think he could handle it. He would love the martyrdom, but I don't believe for a second that he is willing to go to jail for real. No hmm. way. So with the exception of your cousin, Eric, who's shown up occasionally, no one in the family has been at the court proceedings. What does it tell you that the first former president in U.S. history to be criminally prosecuted, who potentially faces up to four years in prison, has little to no family support in the courtroom? And why not? I think... Uh just to sort of take a step back and look at the, the bigger picture, it's just another way that Donald has changed people's expectations and sort of warped our sense of what's acceptable or expected, uh, that his family's not there and, and people who support him probably don't make anything of it. But it, as you point out, it's extremely unusual. The truth of the matter is, though, they're not there because he doesn't care if they're there or not. His relationships with everybody, including people in his family, are, are very transactional. And I don't think he gets anything out of having them there. They don't get anything out of being there. He's much more concerned and angry and disappointed that he doesn't have thousands of supporters uh, picketing outside for him. In fact, last I checked, there were maybe two yesterday. Hmm. Yeah. Um, in your newsletter, Mary, you reveal where the pet name Stormy alleges your uncle called her came from. So what is that name? And what was your reaction when you heard that he used it with her? Yeah, the, the nickname used in my family, mostly by my two uncles, Donald and Rob, and uh, my aunt Liz, uh, was Honey Bunch. And they used it for everybody. I mean, at one point, I thought maybe they'd forgotten my name because they called me Honey Bunch all the time. They <laughs> called my grandmother Honey Bunch. Uh, so I first heard Stormy Daniels make this reference a, f a couple of years ago, I think, um, bef 
long before this trial. And it honestly sent a chill down my spine that he used it so indiscriminately with nieces and his mom and women that he's randomly hooking up with for sexual encounters. It was very disturbing, I have to say. Mm -hmm. So his his legal tactics of delaying his trials as much as possible on top of the election, look, it appears to be working. You've got the Florida classified documents case as well as the Georgia election interference case, both of which saw rulings this week, making it nearly impossible for them to go to trial before November 5th. Are you confident your uncle will be held accountable in court and would losing the election be accountability for you? I, I have hopes that this this trial will result in Donald's being held accountable. Uh, but as you well know, juries are quite inscrutable, so it's impossible to know. Um, it doesn't matter how we're judging the evidence presented. It only matters how they are. Uh, but as you point out, this may well be the only trial that doesn't just finish, that, but that even starts before the election, which is a damning indictment of the state our legal system is in right now. And it may just come down to the election, which is really not how it's supposed to work, honestly. Uh, the American people needed to see these trials finish before the election, so they had the information they needed, because not everybody pays attention every second of every day to what's going on politically. Uh, and having these cases adjudicated before the election would have mattered a lot to a lot of voters. So unfortunately, um, we're just going to have to figure out other ways to get voters the information they need about one of their two candidates. Let me ask you a, a question about the story that cropped up yesterday uh, about 18-year-old Barron Trump going to the RNC as a Florida delegate. Uh, it was officially refuted Friday night when Melania's office issued a statement saying he's not going due to prior commitments. But that got out there. How? Why? Does it sound like something that his father would have promoted? And if so, why would he do that? I don't know, but uh, I can speculate. Um, I, it reminded me of Donald's installing his daughter-in-law as one of the heads of the RNC, that he's really just trying to make this another family business uh, and, you know, another family business that would likely fail if he's in charge of it again. Um, and if that's the case, it's just another way in which Donald is always putting himself first. Barron's 18 years old. He hasn't even graduated from high school yet. Mm -hmm. uh, he needs to be left out of this. So thankfully, somebody came to their senses and, and basically pulled this idea immediately. Um, but it never should have happened in the first place. But I think it's a sense, uh, we can get the sense of where Donald's heading in terms of making sure that all of his family members are in key positions politically. Yeah. Uh, last question. This next week with Michael Cohen on the stand, given the fractured history between your uncle and his former fixer, someone who was right there and locked up with him for many years, what do you think he is most concerned about with Michael Cohen's testimony this next week? What, what's going to rattle him the most? I... Honestly, what's going to rattle him the most is simply the fact that he's going to have to be in the same room with Michael Cohn without any ability whatsoever to respond, no matter what Michael Cohen says. Uh, that is going to be extraordinarily challenging for him. And we know that during Stormy Daniels' testimony, Donald was wildly inappropriate. He got admonished by the judge. And I think it's safe to say that Michael Cohen is much more triggering for Donald than Stormy Daniels was. So uh, that's that's one thing, absolutely. I just think it's really important to remember that the reason we're here, one of the reasons we're here is because Michael Cohen committed crimes on Donald's behalf. He was punished for them, and Donald wasn't. There is no daylight between these two men up until the time Michael Cohen was no longer useful for Donald, and he decided, Donald decided not to take Michael Cohen to D.C. with him. Other than that, they were on the same page for years, including uh, for this alleged crime. Okay. Mary Trump, we're all going to buckle up for this testimony, that's for sure. It's good to see you, my friend. Thank you so much.